Hey, welcome back this morning to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, and let's read it out. Now it came about in those days when Moses had grown up that he went out to his brethren and looked on their hard labors. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he looked around this way and that, and when he saw there was no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. He went out the next day, and behold, two Hebrews were fighting with each other. And he said to the offender, Why are you striking your companion? But he said, Who made you a prince or a judge over us? Are you intending to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and said, Surely the matter has become known. So many years have passed here. Moses has grown up. He's kind of a young adult, and he goes out to see his brethren. And the, the language here that he went out to see his brethren, see how they were doing, that's interesting language because it tells us that instead of identifying really as an Egyptian, and remember, Pharaoh, Moses is in line potentially to even become Pharaoh. So, you know, there's a pretty big investment there in doing Egypt. But instead of that, Moses is checking out his brethren, the Hebrews, who were under oppression by the Egyptians. And so Moses goes out to look and look on what's going on with them. So it says in our text that he goes and he looks on their situation. And the same language is used in several other texts, especially in the book of Genesis, kind of to have a situation where you're looking on disaster, something that is that is awful. It shouldn't be this way. It's like, ah, that, that that's the kind of, when Moses looks at what's happening to his people, he is, he is, he is mind blown. He's how could this be happening? How could we, is this really the way Egypt treats its people? And he'd heard about this all this time, but he's actually looking at it firsthand now, and he is appalled. He is not a happy camper. Moses is very unhappy as he sees this. And who wouldn't be to see their people treated the way they were being treated there? Now, did you notice that when he sees the Egyptian beating the Hebrew, he 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 identifies with the Hebrew. He say he looks, you know, he he's looked to see what's going on with his people. Here's a guy, a slave master kind of guy. He's beating his fellow Hebrew, and and Moses it says he looked this way and he looked that way. Now that kind of looks like he's looking to make sure nobody's looking, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, many other times in the Bible, there's other texts, and you know what you could have here is Moses is looking around to see if anybody else is going to start come and intervene because this terrible injustice is being done. And he looks around and there's no one to save. There's no one else to pitch in and sort it out. And so Moses takes matters into his own hands and he crunches the Hebrew guy. And, you know, maybe he just intended to give him a beating, give him a taste of his own medicine, but it got out of hand and the guy dies. Or maybe Moses was, you know, just not even consciously aware of his own strength. Anyway, he beats the guy and he dies. And he now he takes him and he tries to hide the deed, buries the guy in the sand. Did you also notice that there was very little gratitude shown Moses by these guys when he comes upon the other guys that are fighting? Nobody says, well, we should pay attention to you. And maybe, you know, there was some kind of resentment because here comes this uh, well-fed, you know, Egyptian. Moses looked like an Egyptian. We're going to find that out in a couple of lines here ahead further on. And uh, the Hebrews, maybe they don't exactly feel like he's one of them. You know, he grew up in uh, eating grapes in Pharaoh's palace, perhaps. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, they're not, they don't take too kindly to Moses, and he's not treated with too much respect. So Moses finds out, it looks like people all know about this, and somehow they did know about it. Now, how would they know about it if nobody else was there to see it? It must have been the other guy that he delivered the, the previous day when he was being beaten by the Egyptian. Well, there's the kind of thanks you get sometimes. So he must have told somebody, and now it's widely known. And, uh, yeah, Moses is now trembling and worried because... This isn't going to go over too well in the halls of Pharaoh. So we'll see what happens next tomorrow morning.